Parvo is a constellation in the southern sky whose name is Latin for peacock. Parvo first appeared on a 35 cm 14 in diameter celestial globe published in 1598 in Amsterdam by Plancius and Jodocus Hondius and was depicted in Johann Baer's star atlas Uranometria of 1603 and was likely conceived by Petrus Plancius from the observations of Peter Dirks Zoon Kaiser and Frederick de Hartmann. French explorer and astronomer Nicolas Louis de Lacaille gave its stars by designations in 1756. The constellations Parvo, Grus, Phoenix and Tucana are collectively known as the Southern Birds. The constellation's brightest member, Alpha Pavonis, is also known as Peacock and appears as a 1.91 magnitude blue-white star, but is actually a spectroscopic binary. Delta Pavonis is a nearby sun-like star some 19.9 light-years distant. Six of the star systems in Parvo have been found to host planets, including HD 181433 with a super-Earth, and HD 172555 with evidence of a major interplanetary collision in the past few thousand years. The constellation contains NGC 6752, the third brightest globular cluster in the sky, and the spiral galaxy NGC 6744, which closely resembles the Milky Way but is twice as large. Parvo displays an annual meteor shower known as the Delta Parvonids, whose radiant is near the star Delta Parv. 2. Parvo was one of the twelve constellations established by Petrus Plancius from the observations of the southern sky by explorers Peter Dirks, Soon Kaiser and Frederick de Houtman, who had sailed on the first Dutch trading expedition, known as the Eerste de Chivart, to the East Indies. It first appeared on a 35 cm 14 in diameter celestial globe published in 1598 in Amsterdam by Plancius with Jodocus Hondius. <coughs> The first depiction of this constellation in a celestial atlas was in German cartographer Johann Baer's Uranometria of 1603. 3. Le Houtman included it in his Southern Star Catalogue the same year under the Dutch name de Pau, the Peacock. 4. Parvo and the nearby constellations Phoenix, Grus and Tucana are collectively called the Southern Birds. 5. The Peacock in Greek Mythology. According to Mark Chartron, former executive director of the National Space Institute, Plancius may not have been the first to designate this group of stars as a peacock. In Greek myth the stars that are now the peacock were Argos, or Argus, builder of the ship Argo. He was changed by the goddess Juno into a peacock and placed in the sky along with his ship. 6, 7, indeed, the peacock, symbolize, ed, the starry firmament, for the Greeks, 8, and the goddess Hera was believed to drive through the heavens in a chariot drawn by peacocks. 9. The peacock and the Argus nomenclature are also prominent in a different myth, in which Io, a beautiful princess of Argos, was lusted after by Zeus, Jupiter. Zeus changed Io into a heifer to deceive his wife and sister, Hera, and couple with her. Hera saw through Zeus's scheme and asked for the heifer as a gift. Zeus, unable to refuse, Features. Stars. Further information. List of stars in Parvo. The constellation Parvo as it can be seen by the naked eye. Although he depicted Parvo on his chart, Bayer did not assign its stars by designations. 
French explorer and astronomer Nicolas Louis de Lacaille labelled Am Alpha to Omega in 1756, but omitted Psi and Xi, and labelled two pairs of stars close together Mu and Phi Pavonis. In 1879, American astronomer Benjamin Gould designated a star Xi Pavonis as he felt its brightness warranted a name, but dropped Xi Pavonis due to its faintness. 18. Lying near the constellation's northern border with Telescopium is Alpha Pavonis, the brightest star in Pavo. 17. Its proper name, Peacock, is an English translation of the constellation's name. 15. It was assigned by the British Her Majesty's Nautical Almanac Office in the late 1930s. The Royal Air Force insisted that all bright stars must have names, the star hitherto having lacked a proper name. 19. Alpha has an apparent or visual magnitude of 1.91 and spectral type B2IV. 20. It is a spectroscopic binary system, one estimate placing the distance between the pair of stars as 0.21 astronomical units, or, or half the distance between Mercury and the Sun. 21. The two stars rotate around each other in a mere 11 days and 18 hours. 17. The star system is located around 180 light-years away from Earth. 21. With an apparent magnitude of 3.43, Beta Pavonis is the second brightest star in the constellation. A white giant of spectral class A7III-22, it is an aging star that has used up the hydrogen fuel at its core and has expanded and cooled after moving off the main sequence. It lies 135 light-years away from the solar system. 23. Lying a few degrees west of Beta is Delta Pavonis, a nearby sun-like but more evolved star. 17. This is a yellow subgiant of spectral type G8 IV and apparent magnitude 3.56 that is only 19.9 light-years distant from Earth. 24. East of Beta and at the constellation's eastern border with Indus is Gamma Pavonis, a fainter, solar-type star 30 light-years from Earth with a magnitude of 4.22 and stellar class F9V. 25. Other nearby stars in Parvo are much fainter, SCR 1845 to 6357. The nearest star in Parvo is a binary system with an apparent magnitude of 17.4 consisting of a red dwarf and brown dwarf companion lying around 12.6 light years distant. While Gliese 693 is a red dwarf of magnitude 10.78 lying 19 light years away. 26. Parvo contains several variable stars of note. Lambda Pavonis is a bright irregular variable ranging between magnitudes 3.4 and 4.4. This variation can be observed with the unaided eye. Classed as a Gamma Cassiopeiae variable or shell star, 27, it is of spectral type B2IIIA and lies around 1430 light years distant from Earth. 28. Kappa Pavonis is a W. Virginius variable, a subclass of type 2 Cepheide. 27. It ranges from magnitude 3.91 to 4.78 over 9 days and is a yellow-white supergiant pulsating between spectral classes F5I2 and G5I2. 29. New and V. Pavonis a pulsating semi-regular variable red giant stars. New has a spectral type M6III and ranges from magnitude 4.9 to 5.3 while V Pavonis ranges from magnitude 6.3 8.2 over two periods of 225.4 and 3735 days concurrently. 27. V is a carbon star, note 1, of spectral type C6, a 4NB, 31, with a prominent red hue. 27. Located in the west of the constellation and depicting the peacock's tail are Eta and Sheep of Onus. 32. At apparent magnitude 3.6, Eta is a luminous orange giant of spectral type K2II some 350 light-years distant from Earth. 
33. Shipovonus is a multiple star system visible in small telescopes as a brighter orange star and fainter white companion. 27. Located around 470 light-years from Earth, the system has a magnitude of 4.38. 34. Our Pavonis is a faint but well-studied eclipsing binary composed of a red giant and smaller hotter star some 18,000 light-years from Earth. It has some features of a cataclysmic variable, the smaller component most likely having an accretion disk. 35. The visual magnitude ranges from 7.4 to 13.6 over 605 days. 36. Solar Twin. In November 2018, the eighth magnitude star HD 186302 became the second star identified to be a solar sibling, this one being particularly sun-like, same spectra G2, virtually the same mass as well, with a twin spectra revealing identical metallicity. 37. The first star identified as a solar sibling in May 2014, HD 162826, within Hercules is an F-type main-sequence star somewhat more powerful than the Sun, with a mass 15% greater. Planetary systems and debris disks. Six stars with planetary systems have been found. Three planets have been discovered in the system of the orange star HD 181433, an inner super-Earth with an orbital period of 9.4 days and two outer gas giants with periods of 2.6 and 6 years respectively. 38 HD 196,050 and HD 175,167 are yellow G-class sun-like stars, while HD 190,984 is an F-class main-sequence star slightly larger and hotter than the sun. All three are accompanied by a gas giant companion. 39, 40, 41, HD 172555 is a young whiter type main sequence star, two planets of which appear to have had a major collision in the past few thousand years. Spectrographic evidence of large amounts of silicon dioxide gas indicates the smaller of the two, which had been at least the size of Earth's moon, was destroyed, and the larger, which was at least the size of Mercury, was severely damaged. Evidence of the collision was detected by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. 42. In the south of the constellation, Epsilon Pavonis is a 3.95 magnitude white main sequence star of spectral type A OVA located around 105 light years distant from Earth. 43. It appears to be surrounded by a narrow ring of dust at a distance of 107 astronomical units. 44. Deep Sky Objects. The globular cluster NGC 6752 contains an estimated 100,000 stars. The deep sky objects in Parvo include NGC 6752, the third brightest globular cluster in the sky, after 47 Tucane and Omega Centauri. An estimated 100 light years across, it is thought to contain 100,000 stars. 45. Lying 3 degrees to the south is NGC 6744, 17, a spiral galaxy around 30 million light-years away from Earth It resembles the Milky Way, but is twice its diameter. 46. A Type 1c supernova was discovered in the galaxy in 2005, 47, known as SN2005 but it peaked at magnitude 16.8. 48. The dwarf galaxy IC 4662 lies 10 arc minutes northeast of 8 Pavonis, 27, and is of magnitude 11.62. 49. Located only 8 million light years away, it has several regions of high star formation. 50. The 14th magnitude galaxy IC 4965 lies 1.7 degrees west of Alpha Pavonis, and is a central member of the Shapley supercluster. 32. Meteor Showers. Parvo is the radiant of two annual meteor showers, the Delta Parvonids and August Parvonids. 
appearing from the 21st of March to the 8th of April and generally peaking around 5 and the 6th of April. Delta Parvonids are thought to be associated with Comet Grig Mellish. 51. The shower was discovered by Michael Buagir from Perth, Australia, 52, who observed meteors on six occasions between 1969 and 1980. 53. The August Parvonards peak around August 31st and are thought to be associated with the Halley type Comet Levy, P. 1991 L3. 54. This is quite intense. Ooh. Okay. Well. Son of a bitch, it's another use for the Delta symbol. Okay. The fuck? How the hell was I supposed to know that? Greek small letter Delta. I was just looking at it. Holy cow. Like, here's the. Is this Greek symbols? Hold on. This is like astronomy symbols, right? Ugh. Greek symbols. Just go straight to Delta, right? Uh, Delta, Delta, Delta. Oh, it was right there. Shit. It's like finding where's Waldo. Gosh, darn it. Okay. We finally found it. That took forever, man. Delta Pavonis. And I want four. Delta Pavonis. All right. Let's read up on the star. This is the star that this planet goes around. So let's see if this thing even exists really in this game, or if it's procedurally generated. Delta Pavonis, Delta Pav, Delta Pavonis is a star in the southern circumpolar constellation of Pavo. It has an apparent visual magnitude of 3.5611, making it a fourth magnitude star that is visible to the naked eye from the southern hemisphere. Parallax measurements from the Hipparchos satellite yield an estimated distance of 19.92 light years, 6.11 parsecs, from Earth. 1. This makes it one of the nearest bright stars to the solar system. Contents 1. Observations 2. SETI 3. In fiction 4. References 5. External links Observations it is a subgiant of spectral type GHIV, it will stop fusing hydrogen relatively soon, starting the process of becoming a red giant. Hence Delta Pavonis is 22% brighter than the Sun, 8 but the effective temperature of its outer atmosphere is less, 5604 K. 
0.9, its mass is 99.1% of Sol's mass, with a mean radius 122% of Sol's radius. Delta Pavonis's surface convection zone extends downward to about 43.1% of the star's radius, but only contains 4.8% of the star's mass. 7. Spectroscopic examination of Delta Pavonis shows that it has a higher abundance of elements heavier than helium metallicity than does the Sun. This value is typically given in terms of the ratio of ion chemical symbol Fe to hydrogen H in a star's atmosphere, relative to that in Sol's atmosphere, iron being a good proxy for the presence of other heavy elements. The metallicity of Delta Pavonis is approximately Display style, begin, small matrix, left, frac, fe, h, right, equals, 0 0.33, and, small matrix, begin, small matrix, left, frac, fe, h, right, equals, 0 0.33, and, small matrix. This notation gives the logarithm of the iron to hydrogen ratio, relative to that of the sun, meaning that delta Pavonis's iron abundance is 214% of that of Sol. Studies have shown a correlation between abundant heavy elements in stars, and the presence of a planetary system, 12, so Delta Pavonis has a greater than average probability of harboring planets. However, no planets of Delta Pavonis have been discovered to date. 13. The age of Delta Pavonis is approximately 6.6 .6 to 6.9 billion years. 10. It appears to be rotating slowly, with a projected rotational velocity of 1.0 km per second. 8. SETI. Delta Pavonis has been identified by Maggie Turnbull and Jill Tarter of the SETI Institute as the best SETI target among the 100 closest G-type stars. Properties in its favor include a high metallicity, minimal level of magnetic activity, low rotation rate, and kinematic membership in the thin disk population of the Milky Way. Gas giants orbiting in, near, or through a star's habitable zone may destabilize the orbits of terrestrial planets in that zone. The lack of detected radial velocity variations suggests that there are no such gas giants orbiting Delta Pavonis. However, observation has detected no artificial radio sources. 14. Delta Pavonis, a close photometric match to the Sun, is the nearest solar analogue that is not a member of a binary or multiple star system. 13. So, oh, this sounds like the closest star they could have an Earth-like planet. <coughs> Am I wrong in, like, assuming that? Did I just, what's the, what was it, last thing that I just read? Best SETI target. SETI. Delta Pavonis has been identified by Maggie Turnbull and Jill Tarter of the SETI Institute as the best SETI target among the 100 closest G-type stars. Properties in its favor include a high metallicity, minimal level of magnetic activity, low rotation rate, and kinematic membership in the thin disk population of the Milky Way. Gas giants orbiting in, near, or through a star's habitable zone may destabilize the orbits of terrestrial planets in that zone. The lack of detected radial velocity variations suggests that there are no such gas giants orbiting Delta Pavonis. However, observation has detected no artificial radio sources. 14. Delta Pavonis, a close photometric match to the Sun, is the nearest solar analog that is not a member of a binary or multiple star system. 14. Delta Pavonis, a close photometric match to the Sun, is the nearest solar analog that is not a member of a binary or multiple City target.
Targeted star search. Selecting target stars. Life as we know it developed on a planet orbiting a G2V star at the Sun. The cryptic G2V designation is the Sun's spectral type. Based on a star's spectrum, astronomers group stars by temperature. From hottest to coolest, the spectral classes are O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. Each class is subdivided into 10 and numbered from 0 to 9. The Sun is a G2 star. The V is the Roman numeral for 5 and designates the Sun's luminosity class. Stars in luminosity classes I, 2, and 3 are giant stars, very luminous and nearing the end of their life as a star. Class 4 stars are subgiant stars that are just entering old age and as the name implies, large but not giant. Stars in luminosity class 5, like the Sun, burn only hydrogen in the cores and are relatively stable. It is generally agreed that stars with spectral types from about F5 through K5 may be suitable hosts for habitable planets. Some recent studies indicate that some cooler stars, perhaps to spectral type M4, also may host habitable planets. The Habcat Catalogues in 2003, Margaret Turnbull and Jill Tata published two lists of selected stars. The nearby habitable systems, Habcat 1, was created from the Hipparchos catalog by examining the information on distances, stellar variability, multiplicity, kinematics, and spectral classification for the 118,218 stars contained therein. They also made use of information from several other catalogues containing data for Hipparchos stars on X-ray luminosity, CA2H and K activity, rotation, spectral types, kinematics, metallicity, and Stromgren photometry. Combined with theoretical studies on habitable zones, evolutionary tracks, and third-body orbital stability, these data were used to remove unsuitable stars from Habcat, leaving a residue of stars that, to the best of our current knowledge, are potentially habitable hosts for complex life. The resulting Habcat 1 catalogue contains 17,133 well-selected Hab stars. Since we need about 1 million target stars to fully utilize the capability of the ARTA, a second catalogue of stars was derived from the Tycho 2 catalogue of 2.5 million stars. Unlike the Hipparchos stars, the Tycho stars did not have distance measurements. The approximately 250,000 stars of Habcat 2 were selected primarily by the colors, brightness in blue and visual, filters, and proper motion, motion across the sky. You can download the Habcat 1 list below. Here's a peek at the first few entries and an explanation of the columns. Hip Hipparchos catalog number. Ra, right ascension, J2000 in hours, minutes, and seconds dec declination, J2000 in degrees, minutes, and seconds V underscore mag, visual magnitude, apparent brightness. A star with V underscore mag less than 6 is visible to the eye with a dark sky parallel x parallax angle in milliac seconds of motion of star due to Earth's orbit around the Sun distance in parsecs equals 1000 parallax distance in light years equals 3262 parallax. BV color index the difference in brightness measured in special blue and visual filters. HD, Henry Draper catalog number. BD, Bonner Dirch Musterung catalog number. The Habcat 1 list is in tab delimited text format. Link HABCAT text file here.
Subgiant. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Jump to navigation, jump to search. This article is about the type of star. For the dance group, see Subgiant and Hertz sprung Russell diagram spectral type brown dwarfs white dwarfs red dwarfs sub dwarfs main sequence dwarfs subgiants giants bribe giants supergiants hypergiants absolute magni tood mv a subgiant is a star that is brighter than a normal main sequence star of the same spectral class but not as bright as true giant stars the term subgiant is applied both to a particular spectral luminosity class and to a stage in the evolution of a star. Contents 1. Yerkes luminosity class 4 2. Subgiant branch 2.1 Very low mass stars 2.20.4 m to 1 m 2.3 mass above 1 m 2.4 massive stars 2.5 properties three subgiants in the HR diagram, four variability, five planets, six references, seven bibliography, eight external links, Yerkes luminosity class 4. The term subgiant was first used in 1930 for class G and early K stars with absolute magnitudes between plus 2.5 and plus 4. These were noted as being part of a continuum of stars between obvious main-sequence stars such as the Sun and obvious giant stars such as Aldebaran, although less numerous than either the main-sequence or the giant stars. 1. The Yerkes Spectral Classification System is a two-dimensional scheme that uses a letter and number combination to denote the temperature of a star, e. g. A5 or M1, and a Roman numeral to indicate the luminosity relative to other stars of the same temperature. Luminosity class 4 stars are the subgiants, located between main sequence stars, luminosity class 5, and red giants, luminosity class 3. Rather than defining absolute features, a typical approach to determining a spectral luminosity class is to compare similar spectra against standard stars. Rather than defining absolute features, a typical approach to determining a spectral luminosity class is to compare similar spectra against standard stars. Many line ratios and profiles are sensitive to gravity, and therefore make useful luminosity indicators, but some of the most useful spectral features for each spectral class are 2, 3. A. Relative strength of an emission and E. Absorption. Strong emission is more luminous b. Barmer line profiles and strength of OE lines. Barmer line profiles broader wings means less luminous. f. Line strengths of Fe, T, and Senior. g. Senior and Fe line strengths, and wing widths in the CAH and K lines. k. CAH and K line profiles Senior, Fe line ratios, and m. G, H, and T, O line strengths. M. Strength of the 422.6 nm CA line and TO bands. Morgan and Keenan listed examples of stars in luminosity class 4 when they established the two dimensional classification scheme. 2. BO Gamma Cassiopeiae, Delta Scorpi. B0.5, Beta Scorpi. B1, Omicron per se, Beta Cephei. B2, Gamma Orionis, Pi Scorpi, Theta Ophiuchi, Lambda Scorpi. B2.5, Gamma Pegasi, Zeta Cassiopeiae. B3, Iota Hercules. B5, Tau Hercules. A2, Beta Aragi, Lambda Ursi Majoris, Beta Serpentis. A3, Delta Hercules. F2, Delta Geminorum, Zeta Serpentis. F5, Procyon, 110 Hercules. F6, Tau Bootes, Theta Bootes, Gamma Serpentis. F8, 50 Andromeda, Theta Draconis. G0, Eta Bootes, Zeta Hercules. G2, Mu Cancri. G5, Mu Hercules. G8, Beta Aquilae. K0, Eta Cephe. K1, Gamma Cephe. Later analysis showed that some of these were blended spectra from double stars and some were variable, and the standards have been expanded to many more stars, but many of the original stars are still considered standards of the subgiant luminosity class. 
O-class stars and stars cooler than K1 are rarely given subgiant luminosity classes. 4. Subgiant branch. Stellar evolutionary tracks. The 5M track shows a hook in a subgiant branch crossing the Hertzsprung gap. The 2M track shows a hook in pronounced subgiant branch. Lower mass tracks show very short, long-lasting subgiant branches. The subgiant branch is a stage in the evolution of low to intermediate mass stars. Stars with a subgiant spectral type are not always on the evolutionary subgiant branch, and vice versa. For example, the stars Fk common 31 com both lie in the Hertzsprung gap and are likely evolutionary subgiants, but both are often assigned giant luminosity classes. The spectral classification can be influenced by metallicity, rotation, unusual chemical peculiarities, etc. The initial stages of the subgiant branch in a star like the Sun are prolonged with little external indication of the internal changes. One approach to identifying evolutionary subgiants include chemical abundances such as lithium which is diluted in subgiants, 5 and coronal emission strength. 6. As the fraction of hydrogen remaining in the core of a main sequence star decreases, the core temperature increases and so the rate of fusion increases. This causes stars to evolve slowly to high luminosities as they age and broadens the main sequence band in the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Once a main sequence star ceases to fuse hydrogen in its core, the core begins to collapse under its own weight. This causes it to increase in temperature and hydrogen fuses in a shell outside the core, which provides more energy than core hydrogen burning. Low and intermediate mass stars expand and cool until at about 5000 K they begin to increase in luminosity in a stage known as the red giant branch. The transition from the main sequence to the red giant branch is known as the subgiant branch. The shape and duration of the subgiant branch varies for stars of different masses, due to differences in the internal configuration of the star. Very low mass stars. Stars less massive than about 0.4 m are convective throughout most of the star. These stars continue to fuse hydrogen in the cores until essentially the entire star has been converted to helium, and they do not develop into subgiants. Stars of this mass have main sequence lifetimes many times longer than the current age of the universe. 7. 0.4 m to 1 m HR diagram for globular cluster M5, showing a short but densely populated subgiant branch of stars slightly less massive than the Sun. Stars less massive than the Sun have non-convective cores with a strong temperature gradient from the center outwards. When they exhaust hydrogen at the center of the star, a thick shell of hydrogen outside the central core continues to fuse without interruption. The star is considered to be a subgiant at this point, although there is little change visible from the exterior. 8. The helium core mass is below the schonberg chandrasek har limit and it remains in thermal equilibrium with the fusing hydrogen shell. Its mass continues to increase and the star very slowly expands as the hydrogen shell migrates outwards. Any increase in energy output from the shell goes into expanding the envelope of the star and the luminosity stays approximately constant. The subgiant branch for these stars is short, horizontal, and heavily populated, as visible in very old clusters. 8. After several billion years, the helium core becomes too massive to support its own weight and becomes degenerate. Its temperature increases, the rate of fusion in the hydrogen shell increases, the outer layers become strongly convective, and the luminosity increases at approximately the same effective temperature. The star is now on the red giant branch. 7. Mass above 1 m. Stars more massive than the Sun have a convective core on the main sequence. They develop a more massive helium core, taking up a larger fraction of the star, before they exhaust the hydrogen in the entire convective region. Fusion in the star ceases entirely and the core begins to contract and increase in temperature. The entire star contracts and increases in temperature, with the radiated luminosity actually increasing despite the lack of fusion. 
This continues for several million years before the core becomes hot enough to ignite hydrogen in a shell, which reverses the temperature and luminosity increase and the star starts to expand and cool. This hook is generally defined as the end of the main sequence and the start of the subgiant branch in these stars. 8. The core of stars below about 2m is still below the schonberg chandrasekhar limit, but hydrogen shell fusion quickly increases the mass of the core beyond that limit. More massive stars already have cores above the schonberg chandrasekhar mass when they leave the main sequence. The exact initial mass at which stars will show a hook and at which they will leave the main sequence with cores above the schonberg chandrasekhar limit depend on the metallicity and the degree of overshooting in the convective core. Low metallicity causes the central part of even low mass cores to be convectively unstable, and overshooting causes the core to be larger when hydrogen becomes exhausted. 7. Once the core exceeds the CR limit, it can no longer remain in thermal equilibrium with the hydrogen shell. It contracts and the outer layers of the star expand and cool. The energy to expand the outer envelope causes the radiated luminosity to decrease. When the outer layer cools sufficiently, they become opaque and force convection to begin outside the fusing shell. The expansion stops and the radiated luminosity begins to increase, which is defined as the start of the red giant branch for these stars. Stars with an initial mass approximately 1 to 2 m can develop a degenerate helium core before this point and that will cause the star to enter the red giant branches for lower mass stars. 7. The core contraction and envelope expansion is very rapid, taking only a few million years. In this time the temperature of the star will cool from its main sequence value of 6000 to 30000 K to around 5000 K. Relatively few stars are seen in this stage of their evolution and there is an apparent lack in the HR diagram known as the Hertzsprung gap. It is most obvious in clusters from a few hundred million to a few billion years old. 9. Massive stars Beyond about 8 to 12 m, depending on metallicity, stars have hot massive convective cores on the main sequence due to CNO cycle fusion. Hydrogen shell fusion and subsequent core helium fusion begin quickly following core hydrogen exhaustion, before the star could reach the red giant branch. Such stars, for example early B main sequence stars, experience a brief and shortened subgiant branch before becoming supergiants. They may also be assigned a giant spectral luminosity class during this transition. 10. In very massive O-class main sequence stars, the transition from main sequence to giant to supergiant occurs over a very narrow range of temperature and luminosity, sometimes even before core hydrogen fusion has ended, and the subgiant class is rarely used. Values for the surface gravity log G, of O-class stars are around 3.6 CGS for giants and 3.9 for dwarfs. 11. For comparison, typical log G values for K-class stars are 1.59 Aldebaran and 4.37 Alpha Centauri b, leaving plenty of scope to classify subgiants such as Eta Cephei with log G of 3.47. Examples of massive subgiant stars include Theta to Orionis and the primary star of the Delta Kircheni system, both class O stars with masses of over 20 m. Properties This table shows the typical lifetimes on the main sequence MS and subgiant branch SB, as well as any hook duration between core hydrogen exhaustion and the onset of shell burning for stars with different initial masses, all at solar metallicity, Z equals 0 0.02. Also shown are the helium core mass, surface effective temperature, radius, and luminosity at the start and end of the subgiant branch for each star. The end of the subgiant branch is defined to be when the core becomes degenerate or when the luminosity starts to increase. 8. Mass. M. Example MS. G. Y. R. S. Hook. Mayas. S. B. Mayas. Start. End. Equal. M. Tef. K. Radius. R. Luminosity. L. Equal. M. Tef. K. Radius. R. Luminosity. L. 
0.661 CYGB 58.8 and A5100.0.0 in general, stars with lower metallicity are smaller and hotter than stars with higher metallicity. For subgiants, this is complicated by different ages and core masses at the main sequence turnoff. Low metallicity stars develop a larger helium core before leaving the main sequence, hence lower mass stars show a hook at the start of the subgiant branch. The helium core mass of AZ equals 0.001, extreme population 2, 1 m star at the end of the main sequence is nearly double that of AZ equals 0.02, population I, star. The low metallicity star is also over 1000 K hotter and over twice as luminous at the start of the subgiant branch. The difference in temperature is less pronounced at the end of the subgiant branch, but the low metallicity star is larger and nearly four times as luminous. Similar differences exist in the evolution of stars with other masses, and key values such as the mass of a star that will become a supergiant instead of reaching the red giant branch below at low metallicity. 8. Subgiants in the HR diagram. HR diagram of the entire Hipparchos catalogue. A Hertzsprung-Russell HR diagram is a scatter plot of stars with temperature or spectral type on the x-axis and absolute magnitude or luminosity on the y-axis. HR diagrams of all stars show a clear diagonal main sequence band containing the majority of stars, a significant number of red giants and white dwarfs if sufficiently faint stars are observed, with relatively few stars in other parts of the diagram. Subgiants occupy a region above, i.e., more luminous than the main sequence stars and below the giant stars. There are relatively few on most HR diagrams because the time spent as a subgiant is much less than the time spent on the main sequence or as a giant star. Hot class B, subgiants are barely distinguishable from the main sequence stars, while cooler subgiants fill a relatively large gap between cool main sequence stars and the red giants. Below approximately spectral type K3 the region between the main sequence and red giants is entirely empty, with no subgiants. 2. Old open clusters showing a subgiant branch between the main sequence turnoff and the red giant branch, with a hook at the younger M67 turnoff. 12. Stellar evolutionary tracks can be plotted on an HR diagram. For a particular mass, these trace the position of a star throughout its life, and show a track from the initial main sequence position along the subgiant branch to the giant branch. When an HR diagram is plotted for a group of stars which all have the same age, such as a cluster, the subgiant branch may be visible as a band of stars between the main sequence turn-off point and the red giant branch. The subgiant branch is only visible if the cluster is sufficiently old that 1-8M stars have evolved away from the main sequence which requires several billion years. Globular clusters such as Omega Centauri and old open clusters such as M67 are sufficiently old that they show a pronounced subgiant branch in the color magnitude diagrams. Omega Centauri actually shows several separate subgiant branches for reasons that are still not fully understood, but appear to represent stellar populations of different ages within the cluster. 13. Variability Several types of variable star include subgiants. Beta Cephe variables, early B main sequence and subgiant stars. Slowly pulsating B type stars, mid to late B main sequence and subgiant stars. Delta Scuti variables, later and early F main sequence and subgiant stars. Subgiants more massive than the Sun cross the Cepheid instability strip, called the first crossing since they may cross the strip again later on a blue loop. In the 2 to 3 M range, this includes delta scuti variables such as beta Cas. 14. At higher masses the stars would pulsate as classical Cepheid variables while crossing the instability strip, but massive subgiant evolution is very rapid and it is difficult to detect examples. SV Vulpeculi has been proposed as a subgiant on its first crossing, 15, but was subsequently determined to be on its second crossing, 16. Planets 
planets in orbit around subgiant stars include Kappa Andromedae b 17 and HD 224,693 b 18. So, this star has a mass of about the same as our star. It is 4.73 astronomical units away from Earth. So, <clears throat> Delta Pavonis Alright This star is located about What? Huh I'm seeing another source that says Oh, I don't know what an astronomical unit is. Okay. Well, okay, so it's 19.9 light years away from our sun. It's going to be found... Found near the center. The constellation Pavo, west of the Beta Pavonis. Although smaller and dimmer than Sol, I guess the sun, is clearly visible with the naked eye. What does that mean? The star may be 95% to 2.7 times as enriched as the sun, with elements heavier than hydrogen, metallicity, based on its abundance of iron. But although probably older than Sol, its exact age is uncertain. Based on chromospheric activity and rotational period alone, delta Delta Bavonis could be around 6.6 .6 to 6.9 billion years old. It has a new suspected variable designation, NSV12790, and, and appears to be unusually bright for its spectral type, and so may be becoming a subgiant star that is beginning to evolve off the main sequence as it begins to fuse the increasing amounts of helium and hydrogen. Useful star catalog number for the star include a whole bunch. Alright, since Delta Pavonis is somewhat similar to our Sun, many sp speculate whether it might contain planets that harbor life. Also, oh, although the NASA Star and Exoplanet Database does not yet provide information on Delta Bavonis habitable zone, the distance from the star where a planet like Earth would have liquid water on its surface is around 1.08 astronomical units based on its visual luminosity. So, what does that mean? I don't know what an astronomical unit is. I keep forgetting that. Hold on. Let's uh, save this spot. What is an astronomical unit?
That's kind of a useful number. So let me read that out loud real quick. A unit of measurement equal to 149.6 million kilometers, the mean distance from the center of the Earth to the center of the Sun. So it's kind of the ha it's the definition for the habitable zone, right? One astronomical unit with a star like ours is the habitable zone. But there's probably different habitable zones for different kinds of stars. So that's kind of crazy. Hmm. So really, it's a good candidate. I think we need to look at this database that NASA has real quick, the Exoplanet Database, and do some research there, man. OK. NASA Star and Exoplanet Database, bam. What? Come on. Link not working. Bummer. I hate that shit. NASA's search. Okay, well, so let's pop this up real quick. All right. News and features. Explore Tesnes's latest planet hunter. Oh, explore Tess. So they got a special telescope in space called TESS that I'd like to watch a video about right now, but I can't because I'm streaming, but that's okay. I'll read about it instead. This is now the reading stream. People need to read more, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite Test. We got some more reading to do. Days in orbit. A lot. Test candidates. 548. Nine confirmed. Well, let's get some reading going. The transient exoplanet survey satellite TESS will discover thousands of exoplanets in orbit around the brightest dwarf stars in the sky. In a two-year survey of the solar neighborhood, TESS will monitor the brightness of stars for periodic drops caused by planet transits. 
The TESS mission is expected to find planets ranging from small, rocky worlds to giant planets, showcasing the diversity of planets in the galaxy. Okay, I just want to say something. Why would a... Why would dwarf stars be good candidates for exoplanets? So, a dwarf star alone generally refers to any main sequence star, a star of luminosity class 5, main sequence stars, dwarfs. A blue dwarf is a hypothesized class of very low mass stars that increase in temperature as they near the end of their main sequence lifetime. Most main sequence stars are dwarf stars. The term was originally coined in 1906 when the Danish astronomer, not reading his name, noticed that the reddest stars, classified as K and M in the Harvard scheme, could be divided into two distinct groups. They are either much brighter than the sun or much fainter. To distinguish those groups, he called them giant or dwarf stars, the dwarf stars being fainter and the giants being brighter <coughs> than the sun. Most stars are currently classified under the Morgan Keeman system using the O, B, A, F, G, K, and M, a sequence from the hottest O type to the coolest M type. The scope of the term dwarf was later expanded to include the following. Dwarf star alone generally re refers to any main sequence star. A star of luminosity class 5, main sequence star is dwarfs. Example, Akernar B6BEP or BEP. Red dwarfs are low mass main sequence stars. Yellow dwarfs are main sequence dwarf stars with masses comparable to that of the sun. So I think we should be looking at yellow dwarfs. Whatever. Okay. Orange dwarfs are K-type main sequence stars. A blue dwarf is a hypothesized class. A white dwarf is a star composed of electric electron degenerate matter thought to be in the final stage of the evolution of stars not massive enough to collapse into a neutron star or a black hole. Well, it's safe to explore them, I suppose. Stars less massive than roughly nine solar masses. A black dwarf or is a white dwarf that has cooled sufficiently such that it is no longer emits any visible light. Whoa. So, like, a planet is like a black dwarf. A brown dwarf is a sub- stellar object not massive enough to ever fuse hydrogen into helium but still massive enough to fuse deuterium less than about 0 0.08 solar masses and more than about 13 jupiter masses so like more dense what Oh, okay, okay, so it's like a big Jupiter. All right. So these are the right kind of stars to be looking at, I guess, then. So back to Pink Clay. The test mission is expected to find planets ranging from small, rocky worlds to giant planets, showcasing the diversity of planets in the galaxy. Astronomers predict that TESS will discover dozens of Earth-sized planets and up to 500 planets less than twice the size of Earth. In addition to Earth-sized planets, TESS is expected to find some 20,000 exoplanets in its two-year prime mission. TESS will find upwards of 17,000 planets larger than Neptune. TESS is the NASA Astrophysics Explorer mission led and operated by MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and managed by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. 
Dr. George Ricker of MIT's Kavli Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research serves as principal investigator for the mission. Additional partners include Northrop Grumman, based in Falls Church, Virginia, NASA's Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley, the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics in Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT's Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts, and the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. More than a dozen universities, research institutes and observatories worldwide are participants in the mission. Antenna, camera, sunshade, solar array, thrusters, still a little thirsty. Anyway. Oh man, I wish I knew what scale was. Okay. It's the latest test news. Okay. So what's going on about it? Can I watch videos on tests? Or will I get blocked? Shit. Probably will. New data shows the first ever Earth-sized planet discovered by tests. Learn more. So maybe it's in space already. This is April 15th. Brand freaking new news. Two days ago. NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey. So, oh, that's read it. Oh, brand new. New. Man, I feel like making just a separate video just on this. Oh. Whatever. Um. Progress, right? Then we can go NASA's look. test discovers its first Earth-sized planet. TESS illustration. Illustration of NASA's transient exoplanet survey satellite TESS. Credit NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. NASA's transient exoplanet survey satellite TESS has discovered its first Earth-sized world. The planet HD 21749C is about 89% Earth's diameter. It orbits HD 21749 AK type star with about 70% of the Sun's mass located 53 light years away in the southern constellation Reticulum and is the second planet TESS has identified in the system. The new world is likely rocky and circles very close to its star, completing one orbit in just under eight days. The planet is likely very hot with surface temperatures perhaps as high as 800 degrees Fahrenheit, 427 degrees Celsius. This is the 10th confirmed planet discovered by TESS, and hundreds of additional candidates are now being studied. Scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the Carnegie Institution for Science analyzed test transit data from the first four sectors of test observations to detect 11 periodic dips in the star's brightness. For this, they determined that the star's light was being partially blocked by a planet about the size of Earth. The star that HD 21749C orbits is bright and relatively nearby, and therefore well suited to more detailed follow-up studies, which could provide critical information about the planet's properties, including potentially the first mass measurement of an Earth-sized planet found by TESS. For more information about this result, https colon slash slash iopscience. 
IOP. Org. Article 10.3H47-2041-8213-AB12-2021. ab 12 ed Matter. For more updates about test discoveries, visit NASA. Gov. Tess. Alright, I have to stop this stream and go read about this, or watch videos on this, because this is exciting.